Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to User Education. Um, we continue talking about vectors. This is lecture number 02 um, in the part which is dedicated to vectors. It's part of the course called Math Plus and Problems presented on unizor.com. Now this course has a prerequisite on the same website. It's called Math for Teens where basically the whole theory of um, mathematics on the level of about a very good high school and maybe a little bit above um, is presented. Now this course is primarily uh, problems. Sometimes I present some additional maybe some theory or whatever but usually it's the problems and today we will solve a couple of problems about vectors. Now this whole website unizor.com it contains the different courses not only math for teens and this one math plus and problems also there is a physics for teens there is a relativity for all and some other courses so uh, the website is totally free um, I think it would be kind of beneficial for you to watch this lecture from the website because um, it presents uh, video which is this lecture and notes for this lecture notes are basically like a textbook so this piece of notes it's a piece of textbook which is dedicated to the same um, uh, problems or uh, theory which I am presenting during the lecture and uh, if, if it's a problem then in many cases there are solutions which I present in, in writing basically so it's it's always good to listen to watch the lecture and read the notes um, oh, the website is totally free there are no advertisement no strings attached if you are just uh, studying by yourself then you don't even have to sign in uh, there is a sign in provision for a supervisor kind of arrangement if you have a a teacher or a parent which supervises your studying then there is a sign-in procedure basically to establish the connection between the supervisor and the student um, okay so let's do some problems these problems are kind of simple so don't expect anything unusual okay the problem number one we have two base vectors A and B and two other C and D all on the plane all two-dimensional vectors now they are not collinear now there is a vector X on the same plane which is um, presented as a linear combination of A and B what's necessary to do is to represent it as linear combination of C and D so the same X should be equal to um, I'm using gamma A plus delta B so B is are unknown a and b and factors the same uh, sorry this is supposed to be c and g and c and d all are known vectors or uh, numbers so a and b are numbers a b c and d are vectors gamma and delta are numbers which are supposed to be uh, defined okay so how can this be solved actually it's a very straightforward thing if you will consider this in coordinates we are talking about a two dimensional case so since we know these vectors we know that vector A has some coordinates vector B has some coordinates vector C has some coordinates uh, 
and B has some coordinates, and all known coordinates, because these are all known vectors. And lowercase a and b also are known variables. Okay, so let's write down this in coordinates. How does it look? Well, x1 is equal to gamma c1 plus delta d1 and the second coordinate of x is the same gamma but second coordinates plus delta second coordinates of d2 that's what this actually means if you represent it in coordinates where c and c1 and c2 are components uh, of vector c d1 d2 are components of vector d gamma and delta are unknown now at the same time we have this and that's given which means what which means that x1 is equal to lowercase a times first coordinates plus b times first coordinates of b and x2 is equal to a a2 plus b b2 so this is all known numbers i mean x1 and x2 can be just calculated based on this because coordinates and coefficients a and b are given so we can consider this to be as basically definition of x1 and x2 and they are as the first basically um, uh, kind of step in our uh, solving the problem we can define x1 and x2 now since x1 and x2 are known we can just solve the problem of finding two different unknown if you have two linear equations since x1 and x2 are already defined we can just use them basically as given and solve this system of two equations two linear equations with two unknown which is very simple thing to do so what's the solution well the solution is gamma is equal to uh, in, in the bottom we will have a um, determinant of matrix which is C1 D2 minus C2 D1 then if we will put this instead of this we will have X1 D2 minus X2 D1 where X1 and X2 are these things I I can actually put the expressions here uh, it, it just shorter to do it this way but basically that's what it is and delta is equal to uh, the same determinant of matrix and if I will put coefficients instead of this I will have uh, C1 X2 so it's X2 C1 minus x1 d2 all right uh, c2 sorry c2 c1 x2 minus c2 yes so this is supposed to be basically the solution so now we knowing the x we substitute x and x1 and x2 here so that's how we know gamma and delta and now we can say that the same vector x which is represented as linear combination of a and b now using the gamma and delta can be represented as the linear combination of c and d now what's important important is this is not supposed to be equal to zero right now what does it mean? 
well, when determinant of this matrix C1, D1, C2, D2 is not equal to zero, what does it mean? It means that vectors C and D are not collinear, right? Because if they are collinear, they are um, uh, uh, coordinates are, are proportionate, right? So basically you have something like D2 divided by D1 is equal to C2 divided by C1, or C1 times D2 is equal to D1 times C2, which is exactly this. So that's proportionality, uh, not equal to, 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 to uh, not proportional, means that this is not uh, equal to zero and you have really a, a unique solution to this system of linear equations. Okay, that's it for the first problem. Let's go next. Okay, what's my next? Okay, next is I have vectors represented on a picture. Okay, so let me just draw a picture. One, two, one, two, minus one, minus two, minus one, minus two. Okay, I have first vector which is represented by line going here. From minus two, 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 minus two. And another vector is represented by this. From zero minus two, to two, two. So what's necessary to determine is cosine of angle between them. Well, there are probably more than one way to determine it. But you see, when cosine is necessary to determine, and I have basically two vectors, my first thought was, let's just recall uh, let's say this is vector x and this is vector y. Let's recall what is x times y scalar or dot product. Well, that's basically the length of the x times the length of the y times cosine of the angle between them. So to determine the angle, I can just have a scalar product and divide by product of two lengths. Now, all these are very easy to determine if I know uh, the beginning and the end of each vector. Okay, let's represent vector in uh, coordinate. So we will shift this vector to the beginning and it will be basically uh, uh, okay, 4 and mm, four and minus four, right? So if I will shift this vector to the same uh, origin and this vector also to the same origin, this will go this way and this will go this way. It will be double, so it will be four minus four. And this will be, if I will shift it by two, it will be two, four. So these are two vectors. So vector x has coordinates. I'll, I'll still use the, the letter x because you see vector is just the length and direction. So it doesn't really matter where it starts. So if it starts from zero, it would be easier for me to manipulate with an angle. So x would be uh, four minus four and y would be uh, two, four. 
So let me change the picture. So now we will have this. This is four minus four, four. And this is two. So one vector will be this, and another vector would be this. So this is my x, this is my y. Okay, great. Now, um, the uh, scalar product of these two vectors are 4 times 2 minus 4 times 4, which is 8 minus 16. So this is equal to minus 8. Now, the length of this x is 4 squared plus 4 squared and square root of this. So that would be 4 square root of 2. 4 square root of 2. Now the length of the y would be 2 square, which is 4, plus 16, which is 20. Square root of 20, it's 4 times 5, so it's 2 square root of 5. So I know all the components from which cosine f phi is equal to minus 8 divided by 8 square root of 2 times 5, 10, which is minus 1 square root of 10. Uh, traditionally, uh, some prefer not to have square roots uh, in the denominator, and they multiply by square root of 10 both sides. It will be square root of 10 divided by, by 10. It just doesn't really matter. Okay, so we have calculated it during uh, all these manipulations. So what 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 have have we used? Uh, we used the property of the uh, scalar product of two vectors, their representation in coordinate form. First coordinate times first coordinate plus second coordinate times second coordinate. That's the representation of scalar product, and calculation of the length of the vector, which is square root of uh, abscissa square and uh, ordinate square. Okay, now let's try to do it slightly differently, geometrically, trigonometrically. Now, this is about vectors, but as a check for yourself, if you know something like another solution which you can use, so why not? So let's try to do it this way. So, first of all, let me just connect this and this. Call it Z. What's the difference between X vector and Z, and Z vector? Well, obviously, this is 4 by 4, this is 4 by 4, so this is 90 degree. Right? So. <coughs> What I will do is, I will first, um, now the phi is equal to, okay, this is alpha and this is beta. So phi is equal to, first let's talk about alpha minus beta. alpha minus beta plus 90 degrees, right? So my angle from, from x to y is 90 degree, which is this one, plus this small one. And small one is equal to alpha minus beta. So alpha is angle of the y relative to x-axis. And beta is angle of B uh, versus 
x-axis, right? So if I will subtract from alpha minus beta, now we need cosine of phi. Now if I add 90 degree, let's just think about what happens with, with the cosine. So let's say this is an angle, doesn't matter. Now the cosine is this. If I'm on unit circle. So this is the cosine. Uh, sorry, this is sine. This is sine. And this is cosine of f of phi. This is one. Right? Now if I uh, add 90 degree to this angle, what will be? Well, this angle will also be phi, right? which means I will have a triangle which looks like this one, we just turn it by 90 degree. But now, the, whatever was x, which is sine, that would be here, sine phi, and whatever uh, was here, would be here, which is cosine phi. The only problem is, sine would be negative, right? So basically what I'm saying is that cosine phi is equal to minus sine phi plus 90 degree. So if I will calculate sine of alpha minus beta and change the sine, I will have cosine of phi. So let's find what is sine of alpha minus beta. Sine of alpha minus beta. Now it's a trigonometry. It's a sine alpha cosine beta minus sine beta cosine alpha. Right? Well, cosine and sine is very easy in this particular case. So let's think about alpha. Alpha is This is my alpha, this is my 2, this is my 4. Now this is my, what, 4, 16, uh, 2 square root of 5. So sine of alpha is equal to 4 divided by 2 square root of 5, which is 2 divided by square root of 5. Now cosine beta beta is basically it's a 45 degree right it's 4 by 4 so it's 1 over square root of 2 times 1 over square root of 2 sine beta also 1 over square root of 2 and cosine alpha cosine alpha is this 2 divided by 2 square root of 5 which is 1 over square root of 5 which is equal to this is 2 divided by square root of 10. This is 1 divided by square root of 10. So the result is 1 square root of 10. And we have to change the sign because, as I was saying, it's a mi cosine of phi is equal to minus sine of alpha minus beta. So my cosine of phi would be equal to minus 1 over square root of 10, which is exactly the same as we have from the Victorian kind of approach to this problem. A Victorian uh, approach uh, seems to be a little bit easier and, and faster, but doesn't really matter. I mean, both are quite fine, and the fact that we have received the same result is very encouraging, which means we are right. Okay, so basically these are two problems. Now, as usual, I'm trying to um, encourage you to solve problems yourself. So what I suggest you to do is go to the website unisor.com, choose the course Mass Plus and Problems, go to the vectors and in the vectors go to vector O2. Read the um, notes for this lecture, but don't read the solution. Read just the problem and try to solve this problem yourself again, knowing whatever you're knowing, and try to put it in writing and then compare your writing with whatever I have written as a solution to this problem. I think it's very important. What's also very important is to write it just in complete statements, complete sentences in English or whatever language you use, 
um, uh, that actually kind of helps you to develop very good logical argumented ar argumentative way of of talking uh, it's a very educational kind of practice to write down complete sentences which le let's say prove the theorem or solve the problem okay that's it for today thank you very much and good luck <laughs>